Okay, let's look at another category. The other category is the category of the man-god. There are many religions throughout history who have believed that some human being is actually God. Now, the example the Qur'an uses is the example of Christianity. There are Christians who claim that Jesus is Allah. That he is not just the son of Allah, but he is Allah. He is one and part and the same as God. And the Quran appeals to such beautiful, commonsensical things. The Quran says, didn't Jesus and his mother, because some people also worship Mary, and there were some Christians who used to believe also Mary was God. Even Catholics say that Mary is the mother of God. The mother of God? God had a mummy. So God, mama, mama. Right? Changing God's nappy. Yeah? Cleaning God's bum when he's done a poo. This is, what, what, what's that? Mother of God. Huh? Feeding God. What is this? To say that some human being is equal with God. Didn't he walk on the earth and breathe air and eat food and they went to the marketplace? You know, they needed to buy things. They went to the marketplace. See how Allah makes things clear. See how people are deluded away from the truth. What is this? Allah asks us in the Quran. If God wanted to destroy Jesus and Mary and everything in the whole earth, who could stop him? Of course, no one. That means that Allah has power over Jesus and Mary. If God has power over them and they are under the authority of God, they can't be the same as God. They can't be. And what does that mean anyway? To say that something is man and God at the same time. It's an impossibility to say that something, by definition, God is infinite, self-sufficient, and eternal. Human beings, by definition, are temporary, mortal, and needy. How can something be eternal and temporary both at the same time? How can something be self-sufficient and needy both at the same time? It's an impossibility. So I have to believe something impossible without proof. It's simple. I'll tell you something. And this is what I always say to every Christian. I say, you're telling me. That on the day of judgment, I stand in front of God. And God says to me, why didn't you believe that I became a man? I will say, how could I believe that you, Allah, the eternal self-sufficient creator of the heavens and the earth, was a temporary mortal needy man? How could I believe such a thing? You are far above that. If God then puts me in hell forever, I will never feel for one moment of eternity that God has treated me fairly or justly. But if a Christian is asked by God, how did you, could you say that I was equal, that this human being was me? This human being that ate my food, this human being that breathed my air, this human that depended upon me for, my entire, for his entire existence. You're saying that this human being was equal to me? If that person goes to hell forever, they will know that they deserve to be there. They all know it. That's justice. That is justice. There's one other thing I want us to think about. And I like to give this as an example. Right? Modern science has made us appreciate something really remarkable. And that remarkable thing is exactly how minute we are. Actually, 1,400 years ago, the Prophet Muhammad okay, was also in reflection of the words of the Qur'an reminding us of our humble origins. The Qur'an reminds us that you came from a sperm drop, a despised fluid. The Qur'an reminds us of our base origins. The Prophet Muhammad even mentioned that the universe compared to the kursi, wasiya kursiyuhu samawati wal ard, and Allah's kursi, his pedestal, extends over the heavens and the earth. How? The Prophet Muhammad said, 
The universe is like a ring in the desert compared to the kursi. A ring in the desert. Think about that. Think about a ring in the desert. How big is the desert and how small is the ring? And the kursi compared to the arsh, and the arsh means the throne of God, is also like a ring in the desert. Our universe is like a speck. Like a speck. Now, we are on an earth which is a speck. In a solar system which is a speck on the outer spiral of our galaxy which itself is a speck in the universe which is a speck before the kursi which is a speck before the arsh. Now if I said to anyone, Oi, speck. Even if I said it nicely, Oh, beloved speck. Oh, noble speck. Oh, good speck. But if I call you a speck, it doesn't matter how many nice things I put with it, calling per a person a speck is not a nice thing. But you know what? We are specks. I wouldn't be lying if I called you a speck, and you wouldn't be lying if you called me a speck. But still, we don't like it. How about then if we said that God is like a speck whose kursi extends over the heavens and the earth which is like a ring before his throne. So how about God? You say that God is like a speck? In fact, you said God became a speck on a speck in a speck in a speck. That's equal with God. That is insulting God. Common sense. That is common sense. Now some people say, no, we don't believe that Jesus is God. We believe he's the son of God. But that's not any better. That's not any better. Saying that God has a son is not much better. That's still insulting God. That's still saying that the child of God, the son of God, is what? Some insignificant creature? Some speck on the earth? And I don't mean here to belittle Jesus, alayhi salam. Okay, of course, with Allah, he is an honored slave. But that's what we are. We are creatures of God. We are the creation of God. We are, are the slaves of God. The only difference is, what sort of person are you? Do you believe in God? Do you insult God? Or do you honor God? Do you obey God? Or do you disobey God? That is the only difference between the human beings. Not your caste, not your color. Not whether you're middle class, upper class, lower class. Okay? None of those things matter to Allah at all. What matters is, are you faithful? Do you honor God? Do you praise God? Do you obey God? That's it. If you do that, God loves you. If you don't, He doesn't. It's that simple. It's that simple. So you're either one or the other. All the other things are artificial and of no concern to God. So this is what is important. So we're all creatures of God. But what does it mean, son of God? Think about that. I mean, I remember there was an Anglican priest who came to the same conclusion. He was saying, what on earth is this supposed to mean, son of God? He, he thought about it himself, and he realized that, what is that supposed to mean? You see, when we use the term son, what do we mean by that? My son, right? So first meaning is the literal meaning, begotten son. The word begotten means born of the act of sexual intercourse. Are we saying that God had sex with a woman and had sons? Allah does not, God does not have sons and daughters. God does not have intimate relations with, and, and this is why the Quran asks, if God had a son who is God's wife, because presumably God would not make fornication and adultery illegal for us and then practice it himself. Does God, but of course the, even the concept of God having intercourse is absurd. So obviously God did not have a literal son. God did not have beget a son. 
All right? Because my son is human like me. By the way, if you have any doubts, you can study early Christian theology. Some early Christians, one of the evidences they actually bought to claim that Jesus was God is exactly this argument. They said, my son is human like me, therefore God's son must be divine like God. That's exactly the argument they bought. Meaning they actually had this idea that God must have literally begotten, literally begotten a son. Which is ascribing a calamity 